uh, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, competition graph and its variants. Let me start with uh, defining uh, the definition of the uh, competition graph. If my computer works, it's <laughs> that well. Uh, definition of the competition graph uh, of a uh, digraph, so the digraph must be given first. So it has the same vertex set as the given uh, digraph and has an edge uh, between uh, two vertices if there is an arc from u to x and v to x for some vertex x. Uh, so let me just give, give one example to show what it is. Uh, so, in the, in the left, uh, on the left, the uh, digraph is given. And if you would like to construct the competition graph of this uh, digraph, uh, you uh, take just the two uh, vertices like this and see whether they have a common our neighbor. Uh, and these two vertices uh, have a common our neighbor. Mm, where is it? Yes. Uh, this is the common neighbor of these two vertices. So we you uh, let them be joined in the competition graph of the digraph. So the most convenient way to the construct the competition graph of a given digraph you just go over each vertex, like for this vertex, you uh, see the vertices incoming toward to this vertex. So you can see these three vertices are coming toward to the vertex and they form a clip in the competition graph. So you just make a clip using those vertices. So in that way, you may construct the competition graph. And the notion of the competition graph has arisen from ecology. We sometimes call this vertex X a common prey, a common prey of X, uh, U and V. And uh, we also say U preys on X. Now, it is easy to construct the competition graph of the digraph once a digraph is given. How about the other way around? If a graph is given, then can you find a digraph whose competition graph is that graph? So to answer this question, we have to introduce some uh, notion here, which you might already know. An edge click cover of a graph is a collection of clicks that cover all the edges of the graph 
and a vertex click cover is a collection of clicks that cover all the vertices of the graph. So for this graph here, each edge is a maximal click. So in order to cover the edges of this uh, uh, case of the 3, 3, you need the nine clicks and to cover the vertices you need uh, just uh, maybe three edges but you cannot have less than that yeah. so uh, the minimum size of the uh, collection of clicks that cover all the edges you call the uh, edge click cover number of the graph and uh, similarly vertex click cover number of the graph so this, for this uh, graph, the edge click cover number is 9, and the vertex click cover is 3. And uh, uh, there is a nice characterization. Uh, to characterize the competition graph of an arbitrary diagraph, uh, it is it, uh, the edge click cover number is less than or equal to the vertex number of the graph. Therefore, this graph has edge click cover number 9 and the vertex number 6. Therefore, it cannot be the competition graph on arbitrary diagram. And how about C sub 4? Yes, certainly it satisfies the condition and we may construct a diagram. So you can see this red edge can be covered by this vertex because the ends of this red edge prey on the red vertex. So you can check that the competition graph of D is C4. Now we may ask, what if we are not allowed the loops? <coughs> we do not allow loop, then does there exist a loopless diagram of D such that C of D equals C4? Yes, the answer is yes. So you may take uh, like this. So there is a characterization for uh, diagram. So it uh, uh, is uh, for competition graph of such a diagram. Uh, G is not as long as it is not uh, isomorphic to case of two, and the edge click cover number is less than or equal to the number of vertices. So we can construct a diagram D without loops and still whose competition graph is C sub 4. So then, however, it has a cycle of length greater than or equal to 2. Then our uh, next question might be, does there exist an A-script diagram D such that C of D equals C sub 4? Actually, the answer is no. So to see why, we need to we need the property of an A-click diagram. So uh, D, if D is an A-click diagram, if and only if there is an A-click labeling. So we call vertex labeling like this an A-click labeling if this property is satisfied. So uh, if V i is an arc from V sub i to V sub j, then the index of the uh, vertex of that is less than of the index of the uh, vertex. The, um, you may say this is, uh, let me see, uh, is this head? Uh, it is a head, right? It is head. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yes uh, the index of a uh, head 
is always greater than the index of uh, uh, k. So let me take one example. Yeah, like this. Uh, if you see the labeling, you can see that it is an ace-click labeling. Uh, so you take any two vertices, you can see the uh, arc goes from higher, the vertex of high, higher index to a vertex of lower index. You can check every pair like this. So you can conclude that this is an ace-click labeling and this is an ace-click digraph. And the other way around, if there is if a, an ace-click uh, digraph is given, then also you may find an ace-click uh, labeling easily. So then, if the competition graph of an ace-click digraph, if you consider the competition graph of an ace-click digraph then you have a vertex of the lowest index. And this vertex cannot have a prey. So this vertex cannot be adjacent to any other vertex, any vertex in the graph, in the, in the competition graph. Therefore, uh, you can conclude that the competition graph of an ace-click diagram has at least one isolated vertex. So from this observation, you can say that a connected graph cannot be the competition graph of an ace-click diagram. Then how about if you are allowed to uh, add enough isolated vertices? So if you are given C sub 4, you add a, ver uh, a vertex for each vertex and you will just let those two vertices which are the ends of the green edge prey on the corresponding vertex just to add it. Then certainly the competition graph of this ace-click diagram, certainly that is an ace-click diagram you can see uh, is the series of four with those four isolated vertices. Then, next, next the next natural questions to ask: Is this the minimum number of vertices which are added to uh, the, the series of four to find the, the ace-click diagram? Yeah, uh, but certainly the answer is no, uh, and you can just add two vertices, two vertices, and uh, you may construct a diagram like this. So if you check, uh, you can cover this edge here by let those two vertices prey on prism one, and for this edge, you let those two ends prey on piece of two, just this green vertex. And then for this edge, you let those two ends prey on this brown vertex. And then finally, for this edge, you let those two ends, those two ends prey on this with a four. And certainly, you may check that this labeling given here is an ace-click labeling. So you just need two vertices. And is this the, really the smallest number? Uh, the answer is yes, because in an ace-click labeling, the highest, the vertex of the highest index and the vertex of the second highest index cannot be used as a prey. So 
the proof of six and proof of five in this case cannot be used as a common prey for any pair of vertices. So you have actually four clicks to be covered, so you need at least four vertices. However, those two vertices cannot be used as, a, as common prey, so you need to add at least two vertices. <coughs> Therefore, you can claim that these, the, the two vertices is the minimum number to be added. So this motivates us to define the notion of competition number. So the competition number of a graph is the smallest number k such that g together with k isolated vertices added is the competition graph of an asymptotic diagram. Therefore, as we, we have shown uh, like this, we can conclude that the competition graph of C sub 4 is 2. introduced by Cohen in 1968 as a means of determining the smallest dimension of ecological phase space. Uh, it is just uh, so small that I cannot see actually. Uh, but uh, you can see that this uh, spider frog eat so fly. So they compete for the common prey. So you can see that the competition, in the competition graph of this food web, uh, is uh, spider and frog are adjacent. So uh, that's the um, motive of this uh, competition graph. Yeah. And the Cohen observed that empirically that most of the competition graph of an acyclic digraph representing food apps are integral graphs. So let me just to uh, define, or what, let me explain what the in integral graphs are. So the definition of integral graph is you can just to assign an integral to each vertex so that two vertices adjacent in the graph if and only if the uh, intervals corresponding to uh, those vertices overlap. So is this graph an interval graph? Yeah, the answer is yes, uh, as you can assign intervals like this. So you can see that uh, x, y are adjacent and we have yeah, those two uh, intervals corresponding to vertices uh, overlap. And also YZ, you can see these two, these two intervals overlap. However, with W, you can, they are adjacent in the graph and the, uh, the intervals corresponding to those two vertices. So I lied. <laughs> I lied. And so this is not the right integral assignment. Uh, so just to let me just make this shorter. Is it, it, it going to work? Uh, oh, switch V and W. Still, but they will overlap even though they, uh, they are switched. They still overlap. So how can I do? Uh, oh, oh. So this must be Z, and this must be W. Oh, V. Oh, V. Oh. 
Please. Uh, this is V, and that must be W? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So now it works? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, okay. I don't mind. Yeah. Then, um, how about uh, C sub 4? Is this an interval graph? Then, is this, uh, since this is a symmetric uh, graph, uh, you may step at any vertex, so you just assign an interval to x first. And since x and y are adjacent, so you, have, you must assign an interval to y, which overlap with the, the j of x. So you can go any, in any direction, right or left. So just I go to uh, right. So that's the assignment. Then uh, next z. Then this uh, z is not adjacent to x, and uh, y is a, a z is adjacent to y. So the interval corresponding to vertex z must overlap with the j i y and uh, do not overlap with the j of x. So. It must be drawn like this. Yes. Okay. It doesn't overlap, right? Yeah. And then for W, uh, W is adjacent to X. So the interval corresponding to X must overlap with the J over X. But it is not adjacent to Z, so it cannot overlap with the J of Z, and it is not possible to draw interval, continuous interval, which overlap with the J of X, oh, and also it must overlap with the J of Y. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> totally. My explanation is wrong. Just a moment. Let me just do <laughs> make sure. Yeah. So you must uh, uh, have uh, X adjacent to W. No, let me, what, what I'm doing? Oh, yes, I'm assigning an interval to W, right? <laughs> I forgot. So uh, let me just assign a diagram overlapping with X and Z, but do not overlap with the J of Y. So you must overlap, the uh, interval must overlap with the J of X and J of Y, but not overlap with the J of Y. And this is impossible to draw uh, such a, a continuous interval. Yeah. So this is not an interval uh, graph. So this is system four is a forbidden subgraph for an interval graph. And uh, also the complement of the uh, uh, this uh, in, uh, interval, uh, the graph is uh, transitively orientable. That's the uh, necessary and sufficient condition for a graph being an interval graph. There are many nice characterizations for this uh, interval graphs. So when you say overlap, do you say that if some interval is a subset of another interval? It is possible to then be like that. Then you say that overlap? Yes. If you okay. I think this is overlap. Okay. But if you do not allow this situation, uh, then you are talking about proper interval graph. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's the, a little bit more restricted uh, graph. <coughs> so uh, this food web has, uh, I don't know, if this is the food web obtained from uh, uh, no, no. This is the competition graph of the food web uh, previ previously shown. And you can see these uh, interval assignments for uh, those vertices. Yeah. So certainly this is an interval graph. So the course of observation and the continued prevalence of examples that are interval graphs led to a larger literature uh, devoted to attempts to explain the observation and to study the properties of competition graphs. In a similar vein, uh, the variants of competition graphs have been introduced, and uh, just uh, let me uh, introduce uh, some variants which are commonly studied. 
So uh, given a digress, the competition common enemy graph, uh, CCE graph in short, uh, has the same vertex set of vertices as D, and an edge between uh, two vertices if they have a common predator and also a common prey. So they must have it both. So in the in this for this diagram, uh, if you look at these two vertices, yeah, it has common prey like this, and it also has common predator. You can see this uh, predator prey on these two vertices. Therefore, they are adjacent in the in the competition graph of a diagram. Uh, and also for the same reason, uh, you can see that these two uh, vertices are adjacent. However, even though these two vertices, oh, like this one. Oh, let me see another one. Yeah, these two vertices. Yeah, yeah. these two two vertices. So also I lied. Is it? Oh, uh, because <laughs> I can see that this is common prey like this and the common predator like that. Yeah. So I keep lying. So yeah. this they must be adjacent yeah, in the competition graph. So is there any other edge omitted? <laughs> <laughs> I prepared this talk. Yesterday night, and, <laughs> 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 and let me. See. I don't know. There might be some more edges uh, deleted, but uh, you understand the definition anyway. Yes, and um, let me see. Oh, okay, these two vertices. These two vertices have a common prey. So in the competition graph, they must be adjacent. However, uh, in this uh, com uh, competition common energy graph, uh, it cannot be adjacent. So you can see that the vertex set of this competition common energy graph is a subset of vertex set of the competition graph. Yes. Yes. Oh, the other way around. No, no, it's right. Uh, then uh, let me introduce another notion. So niche graph over digraph. Yes, uh, niche graph. Just either in, uh, those two vertices, uh, two vertices are adjacent. Either they have a common predator or they have a common prey. So it is easier to have an edge. <coughs> And let me just show you later the example. And also, uh, there is a notion of P competition graph of a diagram. So uh, the edges are adjacent. If they, the two vertices are adjacent, if they have at least P common prey. And that M state uh, com uh, com com competition graph can be uh, defined. Before that, we need some notion. So, if uh, in a diagram, if there is a directed walk of the length M from a vertex X to a vertex Y, then we call Y an M step prey of X. And a vertex is a common prey of both vertices U and V, then we say uh, W, uh, M step common prey of U and V. So the definition of M step competition graph of a diagram can be defined in this way. Uh, it has the same vertex set as D, and an edge between two vertices if they have uh, M step common prey in D. So the notation for this M-step uh, competition graph is like this. And uh, certainly, when M is 1, you can, say, you can see that just to, uh, it is a competition graph of D. 
So let me compare those uh, variants in the same uh, screen. So this is a diagram given, and that is competition graph of this uh, diagram. And if you do not lie, <laughs> okay, I'm just <laughs> confident. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, uh, competition common enemy graph of B. And uh, if you see this uh, uh, two-step, uh, uh, actually, uh, two-step competition graph here, uh, then you have to find the two-step common prey for these two vertices in D. And can you find uh, such a uh, common prey? Uh, how about F? Okay, then A have uh, F as a two-step prey, and B has F as two-step prey. So they are just in, in the two-step uh, competition graph of B. And in each graph, it has a bunch of edges because of the condition. And uh, um, you can, uh, so even though it, it has just uh, a common predator, they are adjacent. So just to, let me take one example. Um, can you see just to, uh, two vertices are, which are adjacent because they have a common predator, not common prey? Uh, do you see some vertices? GF. 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 Okay, yes, it has common uh, predator, certainly, uh, but they do not have a common prey. They do not have a common prey. Yeah. But since they have a common predator, they are adjacent in the niche graph. Yeah. So uh, certainly the edge step of a uh, niche graph contains <coughs> the edge step of a competition graph and therefore uh, contain uh, the edition of the competition common enemy graph. And for the two competition graph, uh, if you see this uh, D and G, is it D and G, uh, do you find two common prey? D and G, yes, F is a common prey. And another one, yes, you see G. So uh, they are adjacent. But if it has just one common prey, it cannot be adjacent in two uh, competition graph. Yes. So, uh, uh, but if you have a C of D, C1 of D, that's a, just an ordinary competition graph. So uh, these two concepts are the generalizations of the competition graphs, you can say. Uh, the application of competition graphs, other than ecology, uh, competition graphs have applications in coding, radio transmission, and modeling of complex economic systems. There are two fundamental questions on competition graph. One is, which ascript diagraph have a competition graph that are interval graphs uh, motivated by Cohen's observation? And the second one is, what graphs are the competition graph of a script diagram? The second question is related to computing the competition graph of a uh, competition number of graphs. Uh, and uh, uh, it is very difficult, as also show that computing competition graph in general is empty hard problem. And the first one is also hard, as I will show. And uh, I would like to focus on this first question in this talk. So one reason the problem of characterizing a script diagraph whose competition graphs are interval is difficult is that there is no forbidden subgraph characterization as observed by Stein. So let me see his example. So as you have seen already, this is the uh, diagraph 
whose competition graph is C sub 4 with two isolated vertices. Now let's look at this graph case of five together with one isolated vertex. Certainly this is an interval graph. And this is the digraph whose competition graph is case of five union um, with this one isolated vertex. But if you look at this uh, digraph, you may see this the uh, induced digraph uh, with these green edges, green arcs. That is exactly this digraph. So this. Even though this is a digraph whose competition graph is interval, it has an, an digraph whose competition graph is not interval as an induced sub-digraph. Can you see that? This. Now you don't trust me, right? <laughs> So um, that, that's the exactly the same as this. So uh, in this sub diagraph. So it is difficult to uh, characterize uh, the diagraph, an uh, ASCII diagraph whose competition graphs are interval. So this is very difficult. So, so the study on ASCII diagraph whose competition graphs an uh, interval led to several new problems and applications. So one of them is to characterize competition graph of an interesting family of diagraphs. Uh, there have been a number of papers about competition graph of specific classes of diagraphs. Uh, in the rest of this talk, I just would like to uh, take uh, some uh, classes of diagraphs whose competition graphs are recently characterized. So let me just start with an easy example. So just we consider a graph with only click components. Then what will be the characteristic of a digraph whose competition graph is just a graph with the only click components. Then that is just this condition here. So if xu, there is an arc from x to u and also from y and z to w, uh, this w or v, yes. yes. Then, then there must be an arc from x to x and y to w for some vertex w. That's the uh, sufficient, necessary and sufficient condition for uh, a diagraph satisfying this property. It is very easy actually to show. Yeah, that's just the uh, characterization of the complete uh, graph. So just let me show you the uh, proof is, since it is very easy. <coughs> so we just show the only if, uh, uh, direction first, then uh, suppose that this holds. Okay, yeah. That means in the competition graph, X and Z are adjacent and uh, Y and Z are adjacent and they are in the same component. And since by the, hy uh, by the hypothesis, the component must be a click, so X and Y must be adjacent. Therefore, they must prey on a common vertex. So, okay. Uh, on, yes. So, 
there must be common prey for X and Y. So you can guarantee the existence of W. So the only if part can be proven like this. And how about if part? It's even easier. So we just proved the if part by contradiction. So suppose that uh, there exists a component of the C of D that is not complete. Then you, you can easily uh, show that there are three vertices satisfying this property, right? Uh, X, Z are adjacent, and also Y, Z are adjacent, and they are not adjacent. Then in the diagram, X and Z must have a common prey U, and also Y and G must have a common prey V. However, there cannot be a common prey for X and Y, so W cannot exist. So just uh, this is the proof. Okay, then um, this condition here can be satisfied by some uh, specific uh, diagram, which is called an integral order. So what is an integral order? Uh, so before that, we need some notation. So when we say an integral j is greater than j prime, then just to every uh, point on j is greater than every point on j prime. So if you draw j and j prime, it must be like this. So a diagram D is an integral order if there is an assignment of a real integral J over X to each vertex so that for all X, Y, there is an arc from X to Y if and only if J of X is greater than J over Y. This prime must be. So j of y is on the left of j of x. Then you can see that this integral order satisfies the condition previously given. Oh, by the way, semi-orders are special case of uh, integral orders where every integral has the same length. Now, note that an integral order satisfies the condition previously given. So if you want to see, um, so suppose that uh, this, is, this is satisfied in an integral order, integral order, then the integral corresponding to x must be on the right of J, uh, the interval corresponding to U, right? And also, the interval corresponding to Y uh, must be corresponding, the interval corresponding to V. Then you want to have W satisfied like this. Then between these two intervals, whichever has a uh, smaller left point, a uh, smaller uh, right point, smaller right point, yes, then it must be less than the left points of those two intervals. So you just take, in this case, you take just V as W. Then this will be satisfied. So you can uh, show that interval order satisfies this condition. Therefore, you can say that the competition graph of interval order has all of its components clicks. 
as you click clicks. And you can say more. Actually, a graph is the competition graph over an interval order if and only if, if it is just an empty graph or it is just a uh, complete graph with some isolated vertices. Yes. So uh, the interval order uh, satisfies more restricted condition than the condition given pre previously. So motivated by this observation, uh, we introduced notion C over P. So to introduce notion C over P, we had to introduce a binary relation of V. So A is related to B by W if whenever B preys on U, then A must prey on U also. That's the relation. So uh, for a positive integer greater than or equal to 2, we say a diagraph D satisfies condition C of P if whenever we take a set of size p, there must be a vertex x which satisfies the relation y w x for or any vertex in f s other than x. So we call such vertex a foot of the set. So let me just take one example for you. So if you look at this diagram, then you can see it satisfies condition C of 4. So just uh, there are four vertices, so you just you can take just to pull these vertices as a full set. Then you can have A as a foot because it doesn't prey on any vertex. So the condition is Vectorly satisfied, so you can conclude uh, this diagram satisfies C of 4. However, it does not satisfy C of 3. It doesn't satisfy C of 3. Uh, if you take the uh, this x, z, y as a 3 uh, set, then you can see any of these vertices cannot be a foot because Z prey on Y. So Y, if Z is a foot, Y must prey on itself. But there is no loop. So Z cannot be a foot. For the same reason, X cannot be a foot of this three set X. Y, Z. Then how about Y? Then Y prey preys on X. However, Z does not prey on X. So Y cannot be a foot. Therefore, this diagraph does not satisfy C of 3. Do you understand the concept? Okay. And uh, uh, we can show that. So, however, so C of four does not imply does not imply C of three. However, if Q is greater than P, C of P implies C of Q. The so lower number implies the higher number. Yes. And the proof is uh, not so difficult, but I don't know whether it's uh, 
being able to do this <laughs> now, you seem to be lost. So just, <laughs> just let me just to mention this um, uh, proposition. Yeah. So uh, if P is less than Q, then C of P implies C of Q. Then uh, by using interval with a smaller left endpoint in a set of two intervals, we can show that an interval order satisfies C over 2, and therefore C over P for all P greater than or equal to 2. And uh, uh, we actually characterize the competition graph satisfying C over P in the following way. So uh, if the competition graph is one of satisfy one of these properties, then uh, it is the competition graph of a digraph satisfying condition C over P. Okay. And then uh, Kim and Roberts introduced more interesting variant on condition C over P which is a sister of P. <coughs> and uh, I don't think you want to see this definition. <laughs> so just uh, uh, let me skip. It's more complicated, actually, and also the uh, argument for uh, characterizing this um, uh, uh, digraph, uh, the competition graph of digraph satisfying this condition sister of P is much more complicated anyway. Uh, it is characterized, the competition graph satisfying system uh, of P uh, is characterized in the uh, following way. Uh, actually, um, yeah, it was not easy, actually. It was quite a complicated argument to obtain this result. And let me change uh, diagraph now, the, the class of diagraph. So uh, a partial order is defined on R2 is defined like this. Okay, so x1, y1, uh, order the pair x1, y1 is less than x2, y2, if and only if each component is less than the corresponding component from the other point. And doubly partial order is a subset of R2. Uh, along with the inherited partial order over R2. And a digraph D is called a doubly partial order if D is the digraph of a doubly partial order. So the example is like this. So uh, this is a, a doubly partial order, as you can see. The arrow shows that the arrow goes uh, from the uh, larger pair to the smaller pair. Yes. So this is a partial order, yes. doubly partial order. And uh, there was a very nice characterization for this uh, competition graph of uh, uh, doubly partial order. Yes. The competition graph of doubly partial order, uh, we call a graph the competition graph of doubly partial order, if there is a doubly partial order D, such that G is isomorphic to the competition graph of D. Uh, and also, the CC graph of doubly partial order is similarly defined. And um, uh, there is a nice characterization of a, a doubly partial order. Uh, the competition graph of a doubly partial order is an interval graph and that a little graph with sufficiently many isolated vertices is the competition graph of a double <coughs> partial order. And similar results are obtained for competition common enemy uh, graph. And as long as the competition common enemy graph does not contain C sub 4, it is an interval graph, uh, if and only if. Um, Oh, okay, an interval graph, and that an interval graph with sufficiently many isolated vertices is the competition graph of a doubly partial order. But a niche graph 
as I introduced mm, previously, the believe as, uh, totally differently. So, for an integer uh, greater than equal to four, there is a doubly partial order whose niche graph contains C sub n as an in, uh, induced subgraph. So you can find any graph uh, in the uh, any uh, any niche graph of a, uh, some uh, double partial order. You can construct double partial order whose niche graph uh, contains C sub n as an induced subgraph. So uh, by using the idea of the proof, uh, we can construct double partial order like this and uh, its niche graph is like this and you can see it contains C sub 8 yes. and also you can construct double partial order is, and its uh, niche graph contains C sub 9 as an induced subgraph. So uh, it is quite different. The properties satisfied by niche graphs are quite different from uh, the, uh, uh, those of, of a competition graph or competition common enemy graphs. There are a bunch of uh, Results, but I just mentioned just to result obtained uh, very recently. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for listening to my talk. Yeah.